fisheries consultant at Busesa Demonstration Farm. Welcome to Busesa Demonstration Farm. Today, I would wish to share some a, a few insights about fish farming. Today, allow me to talk about a few topics. I will talk about site selection. If you want to venture in fish farming, what should guide you to select a suitable site or location to dig your pond? Two, I'll talk about stocking. You have already finished to, to prepare your pond. How are you going to stock your fish? I'll talk also about water quality management and then feeding. Let us start straight forward. Number one, site selection. When you are selecting a site for your pond, consider the following. The site should be gently sloping, not so flat and not so hilly. It should be gently sloping, it should be gently flowing to allow gravitational flow of water water flowing slowly and gently by gravitational force. Number two, the soil in that location should be generally clay, clay loam, clay loam soil. So it should be clay so that you don't run short of water. You know that in clay areas, we have enough water. Then. You can also consider pollution around. You should not site a pond where we have a lot of water pollution or you find maybe near the, the site, near your pond, we have agricultural farms where it rains and then you find fertilizers coming direct to your pond. That's very dangerous. So ensure that the site where you are locating your pond have minimal or no water pollution sources. Then we can go about stocking. When you're stocking your pond with the fish, you need to consider a few things. Number one, the rearing system. Which system are you going to use? You have three major systems. It is extensive system, now in extensive system, it's where your fish depend on natural food in the pond. When I say natural food, we also need to, we, what we do, we fertilize our ponds with organic fertilizers. Then, in water, algae develops. So fish like tilapia feed on algae. So in extensive system of fish farming, extensive system you don't add external feeds fish depend on natural food that has developed within the pond second system is semi intensive system now with semi intensive system your fish depend on natural food in the pond in the pond water as well as external feeds you can maybe those are feeds you have bought or you've got some plants that fish feed on to supplement the natural food. Then the last system is intensive system. Now with the intensive system of fish farming, here your fish depend on feed that you have bought. So your stocking density should depend, sh sh those systems, now the system you're using should guide how to stock. But generally, we stock three to five fish per cubic meter. When I say per cubic meter, you measure length of the pond times the width of the pond times the depth. That's the volume. So we stock three to five pieces of fish or fingerlings per cubic meter. 
So now it will depend on the size of your of your pond. I've given you the calculation. You just measure and then calculate the, the number of fish you need to stock in your pond depending on its size. Then allow me also take you through about water quality management. You see, in the fish, we don't we limit treatments like in the animals where you have to keep injecting, doing what. So in the fish, we consider a lot biosecurity methods, especially water quality management. So we have what we call water quality parameters that you have to maintain at optimal levels to avoid your fish dying and you make a loss. One of them is dissolved oxygen. Fish are animals that also take in oxygen and take out carbon dioxide, just like humans. So, you have to make sure that the oxygen levels in your water are maintained at least at 5 or 4 mils per liter. So that helps the fish to breathe well, avoid the stress, and the, the, the way you can maintain your dissolved oxygen is you can see here we have vegetation around, we have no pollution sources, we have wind passing, there's free exchange of water. The inlet pipe is bringing in water as outlet pipe is taking it to ensure that fresh water is always coming in and water that is deprived of oxygen is constantly going out. Then you have temperature. You see fish are not like humans or other animals that regulate their internal body temperature. Uh -uh. The temperature of fish depends on the external environment, depends on the temperature of the water. So if water is too cold, fish will also be too cold. And you know for fish to eat well, to do its metabolic activities well, it should have optimal temperature. So that's why you can see that for us we have the inlet pipe that's always bringing in water, fresh water and water that has been in the pond for long is always going out. You can see, you can see that we have free water exchange. We have vegetation around. All this is to ensure that the temperature of the water does not deviate significantly. Then what you call ammonia. I think this is very important because it is very dangerous to fish. That's why I said that when you are locating the site of your pond, ensure that there is no water pollution around. Because imagine if we had like a factory nearby and wastes are always coming in the pond. Remember the feeders will give fish. Some of them are left overs. So you need to ensure that you feed just enough. Otherwise, those things are going to go in the water, accumulate and form ammonia, which will kill your fish and you make a loss. Then lastly, it's pH. So when I talk about pH, I am talking about the acidity or alkalinity levels of water. So it has a direct proportionality with ammonia. So with the pH, ensure that still there is no pollution. So you can say I'm always insisting on pollution. Because when there is pollution, when fertilizers are coming from nearby agricultural farms with water, the pH will either decrease or increase rapidly and the fish will die. So at least the pH of your water should be from 6.5 to 8.5 around there. Uh, when you're stocking your fish, ensure that you're stocking fish that are not going to reproduce within the pond system. Why? Because I told you that you're going to calculate your stocking density, as I've already told you. And then, after stocking your fish, of course you will know the amount of feed they will eat, but now if you allow them to reproduce within the system, they will compete for space, because your pod will not constantly be increasing, they are going to compete for food, 
So you find that most of them are going to become stunted, others grow at a low growth rate, even die because of stiff competition for resources. So at least I recommend you to buy fingerings or fry that are already converted into males. Why do we prefer male fish? Male fish grow, grow very fast and also have a bigger size at harvest than female fish. So that's why we, co we convert all fish into male fish so that farmers can stock monosex or all male fish, especially tilapia. Then, I want to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the fish farming systems that I have highlighted. Now, let us start with extensive system. You remember I've already told you that extensive system of fish farming, fish only depend on natural food, the snails, the algae that is within the pond system. Now the disadvantage with that, of course, your fish will grow slowly. The growth rate of your fish will be low because the food that is generated naturally within the pond system cannot satisfy all their nutritional needs. So of course, using that system, expect that the growth rate of your fish will be low. It will take too long for you to harvest. Even the size at harvest will be small. Then the advantage with that system, of course, you know that the feeds take 70% of the operational costs at a fish farm. In Uganda here, fish feeds are so expensive. And so it has been proven beyond doubt that feeds alone take 70% of all operational costs so when you are using an extensive system you will not incur a lot of money on purchasing feeds then semi intensive i told you with the semi intensive culture fish not only depend on natural food but also on other feed sources like the pellet the vegetation that you are getting from outside the pond and throw them like that. So that ha I would recommend at least instead of going for extensive, semi-intensive can work because you will not need a lot of feeds because much as you are buying feeds, fish will also depend on natural food. So natural food, then you add little feeds like that. You find that the cost incurred in buying feeds is not too much and also the growth rate of your fish is quite higher than living fish just to depend on natural food then intensive system now with intensive system like i've seen serious fish farmers i would recommend that because you can use a fish tank aquaponics like even in your at your home you can design a small system and buy your feeds and stock and with intensive system by the way we stock it to the maximum actually i would recommend five i told you we use three to five fish per cubic meter now with intensive since feeds are available it means you're going to stock more fish than other systems so you'll be harvesting a lot of fish in a small pond. Your fish will grow very fast. Within six months, you'll be harvesting and making money. So with intensive system, that's how it operates. Thank you for watching me. I know I've used a lot of technical words, but in case you feel aroused of venturing in fish farming, you can come at Vusesa Demonstration Farm for technical support we are always around to support you our dear esteemed farmers our numbers you can see you will check on youtube on our youtube channel 
at Budefa. You can go and say at Budefa in your search engine. You will find our information there, the contacts. We are located in Matale Sub County, who says a trading center, and we are always happy to receive you, colleagues. Thank you so much.